I think with the opening set, you, you almost want to play it safe a little bit. You don't want to scare anyone off. You don't want to, every boulder to be soft, but you definitely don't want to sandbag people and have them come and feel like, whoa, this gym is way harder than my local gym. Or In route setting, I always aim to give people just enough of what they know and what they like and tempered with just the right amount of things, boulders that are gonna push them outside their comfort zone and into a situation where they have to learn and adapt and improve, essentially. One of the big challenges with an opening set is um, the split of resources. So you have to know how many holds you have, how many volumes you have and which colors, where they're gonna go on the wall, how densely packed the walls are gonna be. Like, we have 570 square meters of climbing surface. How many boulders are we gonna have in that area? And to know that ahead of time is really difficult. And so I think the first thing um, we need to do is pick the, like the key lines that we wanna have as the big visual volume heavy kind of design pieces, if you will, or like movement specific boulders. So boulders where you need just the right holds and just the right volumes and just the right position to make like this really great climbing experience. And then later we're filling around that. Kind of want to go back to my default move, not that blue, but like the move that I was going to do there that I, like I wasn't sure if it would work like this one because it's, it's really nice and it might actually work here quite well. I think every setter can fall into a pattern of doing similar movements time and time again, whether that's conscious or subconscious, you know, you just have preferences. Um, and I think the better root setter you are, the more diverse skill set you have as a climber and as a setter and the less often you fall into these traps. But I think even the best setters out there would say, would acknowledge that they have like a certain style or a certain preference. And it's hard to get away from that. So having a, a team come in and be able to help with that and, you know, put a hold the way you never would have thought to put a hold or place a volume in, in a way that you never would have done it is really valuable. And then having the, the team there to come together to help create and really bring um, the best out of that boulder. I think the real value comes in, in the new ideas and the different approach, um, and then coming together to, to execute that idea and really bring it into its best form is, is key. If I were to make this a uh, zhuzh a bit better, gets you excited, doesn't it? As a root setter, you really have to be adaptable and you have to be able to improvise and, you know, make do with reality. But oftentimes, you'll, you'll come in the gym with an idea for a move and you'll start, you'll start setting it and then you'll realise that, oh, actually that thing that I thought was going to work isn't quite going to work and then that's when you really have to kind of adapt and improvise and, and use your experience and your knowledge as a climber and as a root setter to you know take the vision that you had and, and turn it into you know what it ends up being. In the first episode I talked about a you know I was standing under the kind of this little roofy section I said maybe you mantle onto this you face out and then maybe you can jump to a flat hold tsunami swing underneath redirect up over the lip and I came in and I tried to set that boulder and the tub you couldn't stand on and it didn't fit on a wedge and and so it wasn't a mantle at the start at all. You actually have to like run and like stand and turn on the flat hold tub that's upside down, which I didn't think that it was gonna be. And then I couldn't jump to a tsunami at all. Um, so I had to put a different hold on a volume that I didn't think that I would. And when I thought I would go over the lip, I had to just go like to just under the lip. And it's not exactly what I thought it was gonna work out as, but it, it did work. And the essence of the boulder is the same.
I think that there are lots of things in climbing that bring happiness and bring joy. And I often ask myself, you know, what can I do through my route setting that's gonna, you know, make people happy and give them a positive experience? And personally, a lot of my feeling of joy in life and in climbing comes from a feeling of progress. And so I think it's that idea that I really want to get across in my setting. I want people to come here and learn. I want people to do a move that they've never done before. I want people to learn a skill, um, finesse a body position, Im improve, like get a little bit stronger and then come back and come back. And it's not, people aren't plateauing, they're improving, they're constantly learning things. And I think that's really central to my idea of what good root setting is.